So Apple introduced the new iPhones at the Apple event this week and here are my impressions and everything that we need to know about the new iPhone 14s. Let's start with the lineup. This year we get four new models, the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Plus, the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. No iPhone mini this year and understandably so because it only consisted of 5% of all iPhone sales and instead we get the new iPhone 14 Plus. Let's start with the iPhone 14. It comes in a similar design as the iPhone 13 including the notch as well as the same A15 Bionic that was in the iPhone 13 Pro last year. Except that this one has a 5 core GPU. Now this will be the first time that Apple is not updating a processor in one of its flagship phones. I'm not sure if it's because of the fact that we're still facing a chip shortage. But then again, the F15 Bionic is so far ahead of its competitors that they are still trying to play catch up. The iPhone 14 and the 14 Plus come in the same display size options, which is 6.1 inch and 6.7 inches respectively. As far as the big changes, both models come with 1200 nits peak brightness. That means the screens will be brighter. And the iPhone 14 come in five different color options, which are midnight, starlight, a new shade of blue, purple, and product red. And then there's a new camera system. It comes with a 12 megapixel main camera and a new 12 megapixel front facing camera with autofocus that lets in 38% more light and it's twice as better as taking photos during low light scenario. Plus they introduced this photonic engine which is basically an end to end image processing pipeline that should really improve the photos that you take whether during the day or night. There's also a new action mode that gives your shaky handheld videos a huge stabilization boost, basically giving you gimbal-like smoothness. And with the new improved cinematic mode, you can now shoot in 4K at 24 frames per second, giving you amazing detail. All new iPhones come with two new safety features. The first one is crash detection. It uses the gyroscope and the accelerometer to measure up to 256 G-forces to detect if you have been in a crash and then it will automatically call the emergency services for you and alert your loved ones as well. The other safety feature is satellite connectivity. It's an emergency SOS via satellite. This is a pretty cool feature. So let's say you are up there in the mountains or way out there in the sea with no Wi-Fi or no cellular connection. This feature allows you to send a short message which can take anywhere between 15 seconds to one to two minutes to deliver. Now, generally you would need those bulky devices with huge antennas and a clear view of the sky to accomplish this task. Apple has now implemented this feature in their iPhones and they also provide you with a UI that helps you point directly at the satellites. Now this feature is way ahead of its curve. However, it's only going to be available in the US and Canada to start with and free for the first two years. So that's what we know about it so far. And speaking of connectivity, the SIM tray that's on the side of your iPhones, that is now gone on the US models. The new phones will be moving to eSIMs. Electronic SIMs make it easier for you to upgrade your phone or switch carriers, or even have multiple eSIMs on the same device. I believe this is good for the consumer as a SIM card is the equivalent of a floppy disk in this age. And also with them gone, it makes it more secure. With all these upgrades included, you think that this is definitely going to take a hit on your battery life. Not so. Apple says that the iPhone 14s have the best battery life of any iPhones and should deliver an all day battery life. The iPhone 14 Pluses should give you even better of a battery life. The iPhone 14 starts at $799 and $899 for the larger iPhone 14 Plus. It will be available on September 16th and for some reason the iPhone 14 Plus will be available on October 7th. And then we have the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. You get all the features of the iPhone 14 and the 14 Plus, including the following features. A new A16 Bionic chip, a huge camera update, an always on display, and this interesting feature called Dynamic Island, which I'll get to in a little bit. The iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max come in the same 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch display sizes and can go up to 2000 nits peak outdoor brightness, which is absolutely insane because that makes it the brightest smartphone camera ever. And as far as the colors, the iPhone 14 Pros come in four colors, which is a new space black, silver, gold, and a new deep purple, which is actually pretty cool. The Pro models come with a new A16 Bionic chip with a 6-core CPU, 5-core GPU, a neural engine, a display processor, and an ISP, 
and all of this gives you amazing processing power to handle those intensive actions pretty smoothly while being power efficient at the same time. All of this helps the new camera system in the Pro models. So for seven plus years now, iPhones have always had a 12 megapixel main camera and Apple doesn't just upgrade for the sake of upgrading and they will only do it when it actually makes sense and improves user experience. So when I first learned that the new iPhone 14 Pros will have a 48 megapixel camera, I was pretty excited. I mean, it's gonna be amazing to test these cameras out. And for all you professionals out there, you can utilize the 48 megapixel camera by using Pro Raw or ProRes for video and capture amazing detail. And here's another feature that may have gone under notice. Apple has totally redesigned the flash to be more adaptive. It is now able to detect how far the subject is and adjust the intensity of the flash accordingly. Now this feature sounds pretty obvious because our phones have always been able to detect how far the objects are. So the way they have done it is pretty smart. The Pro models get an always on display, finally. You can now see the time and any other important information from the new iOS 16 lock screen without having to tap on the display. And with a refresh rate of just one hertz, that paired with the OLED display means it's gonna be incredibly power efficient and this feature comes at no additional cost to your battery life. Unlike Apple's competitors, where the screen actually turns off first and then the OS on display comes on, Apple has done it very subtly. It shows they have given a lot of thought in this. And Apple won't release a product until they are happy with it and they have got it right. So that's a positive in my book. Pretty much like this video, I may not be the first to upload, but I would like to think that it will have all the information that you need from it. And with that being said, if you haven't already done so, please do consider subscribing as that would help me out immensely. And that brings us to Dynamic Island. Not too fond of the name, but it's actually really impressive and the most Apple thing ever. It's actually pretty genius how they blend the lines between hardware and software so seamlessly. So for the pill, they shrunk the components down by 30% and put the proximity sensor behind the display for the first time. Now this is not just an aesthetic improvement. With Dynamic Island, they are extending the edges of the pill with UI for any given situation. This allows you to multitask without leaving the app that you are already in like alerts when you're receiving a phone call or charging your phone, or when you're using Face ID. It automatically adapts with less of a distraction. It's also perfect for background activity like when playing music. When you swipe out of it, it flies into Dynamic Island and you can tap on it to expand for more controls. And with live activities from iOS 16, like following a game or keeping track of your ride or your timer, it's perfect for the Dynamic Island. And when you have more than one background activity, it adapts bubbling into two elements. This is actually incredible and not gimmicky at all. All right, I'll contain myself. So the iPhone 14 Pro starts at $999 and the Pro Max at $1099. They are available to pre-order now and will ship on September 16th. However, the shipping dates have slipped on some iPhone configurations. All right, folks, so that's all about the iPhone 14s. I am Zane, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.